get started. Go. So, on September 5th, 2009, I had an inner ear hemorrhage. It's quite rare. Nine or ten people a year worldwide get it. You can imagine that there's not much medical history. And because only nine or ten people a year worldwide get it, and the result is vertigo, I have two or three kinds of vertigo. I don't have your grandmother's vertigo, which is kind of unfortunate, because then vestibular therapy would work. Um, that means that what I see is really different. That, it doesn't mean that I have panic. It just means that my brain has a kernel panic, pretty often actually. And so because I have a kernel panic in my brain, I decided to restart my life. Um, oh, sorry, I'm having a little trouble breathing. My husband actually coined the term inspect and adapt. You might think it came from the Agile community, but he's a marketing guy in chemistry, so it didn't come from Agile. Um, inspecting and adapting is part of a creating an adaptable life, and that's what I do. Almost all of us create an adaptable life all the time, unless we live here. And so, since I'm not dead yet, I decided that that's what I had to do. Um, I don't in intend to live there for a very long time, probably much to my ch children's chagrin. But it means I don't take a straight line to anything anymore. Um, I do a lot of detours. So I don't just climb up this step, I go around to the other steps and ask for help. And that's just fine with me. It's a little different for other people, but it's fine. Um, I think the key is to see the reality in everything. You can't just fool yourself. I certainly can't fool myself. Um, and seeing the reality is really important. Because if you try and fool yourself, it just doesn't work. In my case, I fall down. So for me, it's taking a little step, getting a little feedback, taking another little step, getting a little feedback. And then I keep going. I iterate, I iterate, take another step, get a little feedback. And as we say in the Agile community, um, rinse and repeat. And I do this with absolutely everything, because my vertigo, I have oscillopsia and nystagmus, which is unusual kinds of vertigo. Uh, and because my vertigo changes from minute to minute, hour to hour, and day to day, I can never tell. One of the things that my, one of my daughters said is, Mom, you gotta start smiling. So, who said fake it till you make it? Yeah. Um, I try and put on a little happy face, and I pretty much remember to do that. I don't always remember, but that's why I drink a lot of water. Um, drinking water really helps. It helps with the vertigo. It helps keep me healthy, and it really helps dampen the vertigo attacks and the vertigo effects on me all the time. But I don't just drink eight glasses of water. I drink 16 or more. I'm not looking quite like Jacqueline Lane yet. <laughs> I've been working on that with Eric, the super strong trainer, because physical health is a big portion of what I have to do to keep myself strong so that I can stand here. And emotional resilience is another big uh, piece of what I'm working on. It's not something that comes naturally to all of us, but it's a big piece of working on an adaptable life. Because if you don't have emotional resilience, you can't do this stuff. Um, I have a really big support system. My husband and my two children are a big piece of it. And yes, those are my children. Yeah, they are gorgeous. Um, but my support system extends way beyond my family. I have a global support system. And I try to figure out how do I explain how many people all over the world help me. It's the people on the train from um, Copenhagen to Malmo who I don't even know, and the people in the grocery store, and 
and the people all over the world who help me, and I can't even explain who they are. And that's because I'm really not afraid to discuss the undiscussable. Because if you don't talk about it, it has power over you. And as soon as you give it power, then it, it really can screw up your life. So I make a lot of decisions about what to do and not to do. And sometimes those decisions are really, they really feel horrible. Like I didn't go to the speaker dinner because I figured I would just not make it. But I'm here at the conference and I'm really glad about that. So I have a really new life, which I was not planning on. But it's the one I have. And I'm not unhappy about it, although it's really not the one I planned on. But I think it's really important to say, how do I make the best of this new life? How do I persevere with it? How do I figure out how do I, uh, in effect, make that, um, how do I find that arrow and, and hit that target of that new life? How do I really decide what do I make of this life? How do I adapt to it? Because as, as someone said to me, well, you're not going to die of it. Well, no, I'm not going to die of it. But it really is a, not what I would have chosen. So I think the key is to believe in yourself and persevere with this. So I hope that all of you can create your adaptable lives. Thanks.